Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'm here with a book review for The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I buddy read this with Kylie A and Abby Mac Reads. I will link both their channels down below, definitely check them out. And I gave this book four stars. This is the story of a young boy whose mother is killed in a bombing. The story follows him throughout kind of the next 10 years of his life as he deals with the repercussions of that and like living through the bombing himself and also the fact that he took a painting from the art museum in which his mother was killed. So there's there's a lot going on in this book. It's about 800 pages. It's very slow. I don't want to say too much just because like a lot of the book is just like watching his life unfold and I do feel like it gets significantly less interesting if you know too much about what's going to happen. I gave this four stars, like I said. Abby gave it five stars. I believe this is Abby's one of her new favorite books. I think she said it was one of her top ten favorite books of all time. And Kylie, I don't know if Kylie ever finished it. <laughs> Kylie was not the biggest fan of this book. This is going to be kind of a strange review for me just because in a lot of ways this was two halves of a book for me. I read the first half, buddy reading it with them. I really enjoyed it, really loved it. I thought it was amazing and just like utterly captivating and addicting. And I got ahead of them. So I stopped to wait for at least Abby to catch up to me. And then I was dealing with getting my wisdom teeth out and I wound up taking about two weeks off from reading this book. Just like two weeks where I didn't look at it at all. And then I picked it up and read the last 400 pages fairly quickly. And I had a very different reaction to the last 400 pages than I did to the first 400. So if it sounds like this review is very contradictory, that's probably why, because I did have just like different thoughts about the two different parts of the book. So I'm going to start at the beginning, which I did really enjoy. And I say beginning, the first like 400 pages versus the last 400 pages, roughly. I was utterly engrossed in the beginning. Theo is 13 years old and he goes to an art museum with his mother when he's been suspended from school and they have a meeting at the school and they just stop inside the art museum for like half an hour to kill time on their way to the meeting with his principal when it is blown up by terrorists I believe. It's not really important. It's just like an attack and it sort of sets the events of the book in motion. His mother is killed and Theo it winds up very concussed and now basically an orphan because his father isn't in his life. It was just him and his mother. And the first half just deals with him trying to get by in life. And not a lot of like very exciting things happen. This is very much a slow drawn out kind of day in the life type book, at least for the first half. And I loved it. I loved the family dynamic of like his family friends and things like that. I thought that was so well done and I really enjoyed all the characters and just like the traumas that he went through and the way he reacted to them was just like very interesting and it's just it's a stupidly slow book and I'm not I'm really not exaggerating. It's one of those books that's just like pointlessly slow and unnecessarily wordy and it just goes on forever for no real reason because it definitely could have been like half the length and told the same story. But I loved that. Like that's the kind of thing that I really enjoy in a book when it just like takes the time to describe every little detail of someone's life and it really puts you in their life and you get to see so much of them as a person. And that's what I love about slow books and this was just like so much that. Like I read the first half so quickly I was just like addicted to reading it and I never wanted to put it down. Then we get to the second half of the book where Theo is an adult and it doesn't happen suddenly although it kind of does. The first half takes place from when Theo is 13 and his mother is killed until he's about 18, 17 or 18 I believe. And then the second half of the book takes place from like his early 20s to like his mid 20s. So you skip a few years in the middle which was kind of weird and jarring and I didn't really like that. And that wasn't exactly where I stopped but it was around the part where I stopped. So I do think that contributed to this book feeling like a book and a sequel. And it was like I really liked the book, not so much the sequel. This part also focused a lot more on the art theft and like the criminal underworld and he had this friend named Boris who was kind of involved in the Russian mob maybe. It never fully explained. It was very strange that I didn't enjoy that element of the story. 
And it was just a lot about, like, the criminal underworld, and he's got this painting that he stole when he was 13, and he's acting like he could get in so much trouble for it, when, like, he was a concussed 13-year-old whose mother had died. Like, if he'd just returned that painting, no one would have cared. He'd have been like, yo, I was stupid. Like, I was confused. I took this painting because I thought a dying guy told me to, and then I didn't know what to do with it. They honestly would have been fine with that. They're not going to prosecute you for taking something when you were 13 and then being scared about it. Like... It, it just it, that part I didn't care about I was in this story for like this young boy who's lost his mother and has no one else in the world and is kind of fending for himself and trying to find his place in the world like that was what I really loved about this not the criminal underworld and art theft and forgeries and all kinds of other things that were just like too much and not my kind of thing at all. I also felt like the second half of the book started skipping things in his life. Like we would go from when he was like 17 was about when the first half ended and then it just kind of like skipped to like when he was in his early 20s and he was talking about how he worked with this guy he'd met named Hobie and like he was doing criminal things and like he was addicted to all kinds of drugs and then it would kind of give us some flashbacks to earlier, and then it would just kind of skip forward again and be like, oh yeah, he's married now. He's been dating this girl for like six months. And I was like, wait, why is he getting married to this girl? Like, we met her like twice. And it was, it felt very jumpy, and I just couldn't get into it. Like, and I do think part of that is definitely because I put it down. And I do want that to be like a heavy caveat to this video. Like, I loved this book while I was reading it, but I do so much better when I read things like all at once and I don't take long breaks. It's why I tend to like binge read all my books very quickly and most of my books just take, I get through in a couple of days. I enjoy them more that way. And this just felt like it, this was something new. Like I picked it up again and I just could never get back into the story. It felt like I forced my way through those last 400 pages. So. I don't know. I wouldn't give the last 400 pages like a four star rating. If I was rating them separately, it would be like four stars and three stars because it wasn't bad, but it was the second half was definitely just like kind of like, okay, that was fine. Like it wasn't terrible. I didn't dislike it, but it wasn't great either. But I wish I just experienced it all at once because I would have enjoyed it so much more that way, I think. Even though I do think some of the issue was just that the book itself changed focus and it wasn't just about this young boy dealing with trauma and not having anyone to look out for him anymore. There were also a lot of things in Donna Tartt's writing style that I wasn't the biggest fan of. She had really long paragraphs of like dialogue or exposition in the dialogue especially where a character would just go off for like a page or two and just dialogue and explain their entire backstory. And it was annoying. It was like really annoying and unnecessary. And I don't really understand why she included that so, so much. I really don't like that in books. It didn't bother me in the first half. And I don't know if that was just because I was invested in the story or she did it less. But like in the second half, I was just irritated by that because it felt so unnecessary and just like, such a lazy way to write a book. And she also included a fair amount in other languages in the book. Like, not not like a lot, not like there were sections written in other languages, but just like occasional words or sentences. And she wouldn't translate them. And just like a variety of different languages, like Spanish, French, Russian, Ukrainian, Dutch, whatever. I'm not sure. Like, there, there was a variety. And it was fine. But like, I'm just one of those people who like, I get irritated when a second language is included that isn't translated. And like, it was the kind of inclusion where it didn't need to be translated. Like you didn't need to understand it for the story. It was just kind of added for flavoring. But I just, I get so irritated when I don't know everything that's being written in a book. I just want to be able to understand everything. And that doesn't seem like a big ask. I just like either translate it like in the in the text like beside it like be like oh he said this in a different language and then like translate it into english or just add an asterisk and translate it in a footnote at the bottom of the page like one of the two just i want to know what it says like i'm that person who will look up everything on like google translate just because i really want to know what it says and it bothers me to not know so i didn't really like that she added that it's not really a big thing it's just this minor irritation that I see in books sometimes. And then there were just like small things that 
didn't make sense in context. Just like little inconsistencies with like real life that just kind of like messed with my suspension of disbelief. Because like there's always a degree to which you have to look at a book and be like, okay, this isn't real. It's fine that it isn't real. And then there are just things that are little and illogical. Like, for example, easy example from the beginning. The museum is bombed, where he and his mother are, and Theo walks out alive, very concussed. He's got blood on him because someone just died right beside him. He's probably got, like, dust and debris all over him on his hair and his clothes. And he walks out of the museum, and then he kind of, like, approaches the first responders and gets yelled at by people, and then just walks all the way home, like, several blocks at least. And it, it's like, I don't believe that no one looked at this 13-year-old child and was like, You've clearly just been blown up. Let's get you some medical attention. And I don't believe that that would happen, that he could just be allowed to walk home on his own. It doesn't make sense to me that there's, like, firefighters and EMTs and cops there, and they're just like, oh, you've been blown up. Go home. Bye. And there were, it wasn't just that. Like, when it was just that, it was like, fine. Like, I can disregard that. But there were just a number of small things like that that was like, I don't, buy this. I don't believe that this would happen. And it just kind of made it hard to buy into the book as a whole. Which, again, was something that didn't bother me super much for like the first half of the book, but for the second half really bothered me a lot. And then my final note is just that I really didn't like Boris's character. Boris was a friend of Theo's that he made when he was like 14, 15, and was kind of in his life the rest of the book. Boris was kind of part of the criminal underworld or kind of brought Theo into it or pretended that he was part of the criminal underworld. I really don't know. It was kind of all hazy and unclear because Boris was a liar and Theo was just kind of going along with it. And I don't even know that it was specifically Boris that irritated me, but just like his role in the story and what he brought with him. Because like I said before, I wasn't into the criminal underworld art theft stuff. That wasn't what I enjoyed about this book. I really, really enjoyed just learning about Theo's life and seeing his day to day and seeing how he was coping or not coping as the case may be. And Boris just kind of brought in this whole other plot that I guess was the main plot of the book, but I didn't really like the main plot of the book, apparently. I just liked Theo's life. I wanted to learn more about Theo's life and when they were like off shooting people I was like that's weird. That's not what I'm here for. So I don't know. If this sounds like a very negative review I really don't mean for it to be. It's just that like most of what I'm feeling now towards this book comes from the second half and it's hard for me to really like capture what I loved about the first half when I'm feeling so negative now. So I don't know. This is a weird review. I really just wish I'd read it all at once because that is how I prefer to read books and the fact that I took a two week break really just I think ruined the experience for me. So I'm very disappointed in that but I do think four stars is kind of like a fair rating for what I felt about it, how much I loved it at the beginning and then how much I didn't at the end. Let me know down below if you've read The Goldfinch and what you thought of it if you have. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.